Hey guys, welcome to another video. In today's video, we're going to be working on our button simulator series. We're going to be fixing a bug that our previous game or our previous episode included. If you don't know what the bug is, I'll quickly play test and show it. So, as you can see, everything looks normal. But if I set my cache, let me, let's say, add, let's say, make it 90. So, as you can see, once I hit 100 cache, this should turn green. So, let's see here. So, oh, it doesn't even turn green. We probably accidentally changed something up. But in this video, we're just going to be fixing everything entirely. The previous bug, if I didn't mess anything up, this would be green for the player. But let's say one person in the game gets enough cash for it. It's going to show for everybody that they have enough cash for it. But we don't want that. We only want the player who has enough cash to be able to see it as green. And whoever doesn't have enough cash will see it as red. So... Instead of having one of these scripts in every single object, and the reason why this isn't working actually is, well, first of all, it's in workspace, and local scripts don't really work in workspace. They usually work in places like starter UI and starter player scripts. So instead of having all these scripts here, we can just go ahead and remove all of them. Actually, we can keep one. So we can go ahead and keep this script, and we can drag this script over into starter player and then it's put into starter player scripts so in our enough effect script we're just going to be changing a few aspects of the script for starters we're going to do a pairs loop so for i v in pairs workspace dot buttons get children do so this is going to loop through every object that's inside of our buttons folder. We're going to be getting every child inside of the buttons folder. So whatever's inside of this folder, which should be the button one, button two, and button three folders. Then doing this, we can pretty much just snatch this part of the script and put it up. And then all we have to do is modify it. So we can select this, right click it and hit cut. Or we can press Ctrl X and then we can press Ctrl V or right click and hit paste and put our script here. Now instead of script.parent, we're going to replace this with V because V is going to be attached to each folder inside of this buttons folder. So for example, the first time it's looping through here, V is going to equal button 1. So it's like replacing this with button1.config.priceofvalue. So if we change this to V real quick, change everything here that says script.parent to V, then pretty much the same thing as doing workspace.buttons.button1.config.price.value, then button2, button3, and so on until we actually get through every one of the buttons. And now we can also replace this part, which we could just copy this and then replace all of this and this should be able to change or work properly and just in case what we can do is we can add a print statement after all of these so since this is changing the color to a green color we can do print green oh we have to do quotes so this is green and over here we can do red because the color is red so we'll print red and we can repeat the same thing up here. We could do print green. And then we can go ahead and print red. So this is just a little bit of debugging to see if the script is actually even making it to this line. Because if it wasn't, then this wouldn't print. But if it is actually getting past this, then it should be able to print the green text into the output. So this should just be this script finished. And a quick note thing I noticed inside of button manager, which you might have noticed is I accidentally kept this to button two, which this was meant to be working for button three. So let me real quick change that. If you didn't make that mistake, then you don't have to follow along with that part. So that should be this script completed instead of enough effect. I guess I'm just going to name this button effects 
because it's for all of the buttons. Just gotta make sure there's no scripts in there because we don't need one. So we can go ahead and play test the game. And all right, so to prevent this error from leader stats not being a valid member of the player, so once we join the game, let me give a quick example. The script is going to be running because it's a starter player script. So if we head into player scripts, this script is going to be in the player before anything else because this happens as soon as the player like starts up the game. As soon as it starts up, this script is going to be put into play. And on a player added event, it's once the player is fully into the game and then we add the leader stats folder and everything. So this is pretty much running before the leader stats script actually creates the leader stats folder so it doesn't find it. And so we should just have to add a delay up here. We can do something like task dot wait and then let's say let's do three. Three to five should be good since it's three seconds after the player gets added. And if we check our leader stats, we didn't add a delay for creating it. So yeah, it should be fine if we just add a three second delay. So now if we hit play, as you can see this error shouldn't pop up because the script is running after the leader stats folder is created and as you can see it's printing red because we don't have enough money for any of the three buttons as you can see 100 cash we got 13 so i'm going to switch to the server switching to the server you can just click this button right here and this is a good way to test what people can see on the client versus what people can see on the server and as you can see, I can see my own cache on the server. So this is what everybody else sees. And then this is what you see. So I'm going to change my stats on the server. Since that's the way I'm adding my stats. If I try and add stats on the client, as you can see, let's say I make this 100. Or let's say 5,000. As you can see, when it changes, it goes back to what the amount was previously. Because I'm changing it on the client, but it's also changing on the server. And when it gets changed on the server it doesn't you pretty much can't modify the value that's on the server through the client so the server doesn't read what changed on the client if i could explain that properly but let's hit play once again so i could reset everything and now if i hit this and go to the server i hit go to my players folder go to my leader stats now as you can see i could change my cache to let's say 90 and it's increasing and not going back to whatever number it was before so if i head over to the client as you can see i hit 100 cash exactly how much is needed for here it started printing green and red two times because there's two red buttons and one green button so i can go ahead and switch back to the server and as you can see the button is red for the server because the server doesn't have enough cash for it but i do have enough cash for it this is going to change to green if the other people have enough cash for it too so we could go ahead and purchase this it's printing red three times again i'm gonna go ahead and change my cash to 400 so we can go and see all the buttons oh i made it 900 as you can see these two buttons are green let's real quick get to 450 cash and if we go to the client or the server it's all red but if we go to the client we got enough cash and we can buy everything properly and as you can see it was printing just green and it wasn't printing red here so yeah that should just be the fix for this bug in the next episode we should be adding more stuff like ascends or rebirths and ultra rebirths and whatnot so yeah hopefully you enjoyed this video see ya